What's good? Lucky Lucky Podcast, Anora Boys in the building, brought to you by Anora Whiskey, AnoraWhiskey.com, their premium American whiskey, AnoraWhiskey.com. And if you don't drink, by all means, if you're going to do it, make sure you do it responsibly. You got to do it responsibly. CFB Nation, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Audio Edibles each and every day. Don't forget our YouTube channel, Lucky Lucky Podcast. We would love for you to subscribe, that thumbs up, smash it for us because it helps us with. The viewing audience, it helps get the videos out there. You guys have been fantastic, man. I'm telling you, the views continue to go up every time we do a show. It's all because of you, LL Nation. That dude, the original Lucky Lucky Malik Zaire. I am Sean Davis, and we are the home of the misguided passion and forever committed to making sure that we continue to spin it different. Today, we're going to talk about the stories, right? Stories from the spring, right? It could be quarterback. It could be wide receiver. It could be Mike Denbrock. It could be recruiting, right? Mm -hmm. we, hey, we're going to check out film of a wide receiver flirting with Deuce Knight this morning on social media. What's up with that? That, that could be connected to a big-time quarterback coming in for a visit. What's up with that? Mm -hmm. What's up with that? <laughs> we might get to it. We might get to it. And oh, by the way, Angel Reese, I don't want, hey man, dry the pies. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. We don't want to hear it. We don't all, all, all in the videos. All in the videos. All, in the all, 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 all yeah, all in Big the Big Bad Wolf talk in the in the uh in the in the, in the, in the press conferences and in the interviews and in on Twitter. You know, yeah. you know, you know when the differences between successful and unsuccessful people left. Successful people aren't afraid to take L's. Aren't afraid to take See, aren't afraid. You gotta be able to take some L's. You Not gotta too. know. You, you, know greatness, you gotta be ready to take the L's. Yeah. She wasn't ready to take that L. No, <laughs> she was not ready to take the L. And she was not ready to take the L. I just hear a bunch Ooh. of excuses and reasons Man. and whys and all that. All of that. All of that. <laughs> All of that, bro. We're gonna talk about it because left it is a cautionary tale mm. to athletes in this NIL space. You better be ready to take some L's mm. to go with them M's. Hey, hey, hey! In them M's, you better be ready. You better be ready to take the L's that come along with it. And L come before M in alphabet for a reason. Man, look, that's a bar. That's mm. a bar. Mm. You need to get that to your boy Drake because he still is not. He ain't been heard oh from. my god, he still, <laughs> still ain't been heard from. He, he listen. They doing sneak disses right now. Till somebody drop that track, mm. calling him out like they should. Mm -hmm. He ain't got to worry about it. He already sending shots at Travis Head and all that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Look. Hey. So look, left tried to create this narrative yesterday, right? Because I had some things to do. I really had some business to take care of. We just couldn't find the time to do a show. Originally, I said, yo, let's do it later. And then, man, I didn't really get back until almost. Right. I didn't even watch the game last night, love. Like, people were texting me. I didn't watch either one, man. I was watching a movie with the missus, bro. I, oh, so yesterday see, was like that, business that's Trump, that's in the missus. Trump card right there. Absolutely. Trump card. Absolutely. People are texting me. I'm like, man, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sitting up here, like, cuddled up. Um, yeah, you, yeah, you boo love it now. Yeah, you that's my dude. It. I was like, dude, I've watched women's basketball all year. Like, that's right. I'm not one of these Johnny come late when it comes to women's basketball. Oh, they, 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 they super excited that it's yeah. interesting now. Like, oh my God, I got to watch this matchup. Like, dude, I've been watching both these teams, all four of these teams, all year. That's right. All year. You ain't missing On nothing. Random games. No. Game. no. No. <laughs> So, Beth, you want to start this narrative. You said I was stuck in the show yesterday because of what happened to my line. <laughs> I, I just want to come to debunk. Okay? <laughs> you know I'm not like that. Right? You know why you know? But I flat out said that the story ends when we play UConn. Did I not? Did hey, I not say that? Was did, I, did I not say that? Did I not say that? Yes. Yes. Now, did I know a 30 to zip run 
was going to oh, be that. part of that. Did I know <laughs> that Illinois would literally go 52 actual minutes without scoring? <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know that. I don't Never know how that even happens. That. I, honestly, I don't know. But you know, they, they say it's the uh, inflate gate now. They got mm. the ball super inflated. So the <laughs> ball comes off hard off the rim. They can't dribble the right way. So they, that, that's the conspiracy right now. Mm. Man, look here, man. I Look, I try to tell people once again. I, watch, I told people all year. Illinois coach, it's not good. In game adjustments, terrible. <laughs> like, it's, it's terrible. Terrible. Like coaching mismatch. This is like, dude, wave the white flag before they even had an opening tip. Like, we know what this is. It, dude, it's like the movie Titanic, dude, right? Once the water starts coming in, like, we know how this is going to end. Wait, dude. So, you know what I did? I turned the channel. I wasn't about to be the band playing as the ship went down. No. Mm -mm. I started no. watching the documentary on Moses on the internet on Netflix, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, let me go find something to enjoy myself. Right? Yeah, I couldn't this depend, ain't, this ain't right. I couldn't depend on White Sox baseball. I couldn't depend on anything. I was like, hey man. No and they cat Coleman Hawkins. We're gonna talk about this too. Because you know, after Illinois loses, Coleman Hawkins start playing for Illinois. Uh, tweets out, uh, go Boilermakers. I'm all about the Big Ten. Yes, no, no, no. What? Man. What? <laughs> what? What are you No, nah, bro. About? I'm not repping for my rival. Yeah, repping for the rival, too. Just because it's the that. Big Ten? Man, we're going we to talk about that in the petty train. There's yeah. a lot to get to today, love. <laughs> Cats have been acting crazy. And, and yesterday, I, for some reason... Everybody, everyone in Chicago lost their mind behind the wheel. I don't know what was going on. Man, have no they idea. Drive out there, man. Oh man, it was awful. Oh, and the people driving 85, 90, 85, in, the middle, 90. In, in a storm. Left when I tell you, it was storming. Mm. Wind was like 15 to 20 miles per hour. I'm on Lakeshore Drive, casting dust. They said, I gotta get home. I gotta get out of this. Mm -hmm. Yep. And shout out to our boy King Gibb. Who is over the moon? Men and women's, men and women's basketball in the final four. That's that, kind of crazy, huh? That dude is losing his mind. I can't do. We do the show with him this week. Wait, we so it's the women's in the final four too? They face South Carolina, bro. Oh, okay, well, that's good. that story is about the end. But I mean, <laughs> you know, so they made it. About the end. That's right. Right. Mama, we made it. Mm, 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 mm. And yeah, they got they made oh, it. No, we got to get Ken Gibbs on the show before that that game happens. <laughs> that's all. Because <laughs> the men might actually do something. They and then you got you got Baby Zebo going up against Purdue and Zach Eaton. Hey, I think that's the matchup of the year right there. Because because uh because Burns is out there really. Playing like a big man. He playing like he from Chicago or something. He's backing down. Mm. He, he calling. He ain't calling no fouls. Mm. I'm, a, I'm glad they letting him play because mm. they ain't they ain't using his weight against him and giving a bunch of offense Ooh. charges and stuff. Just out there putting in work on Filipowski. <laughs> and he got the big move. Right hand, yeah. left hand, dime, dime. And when you get Nikola, when you get yeah. when you get Nikola Jokic coming to post game, telling everybody, "Sorry, I was late." I was watching DJ Burns. Get 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 to work. Get busy, man. He just he just another Kenny Lofton Jr. Kenny Lofton Jr. got game. Uh, he, like he, that. Yeah, he a little bit taller than Kenny Lofton. Okay, yeah, because Kenny was six six three six four. Yeah, yeah, a little bit taller. Notre Dame fans know the way he dropped that game winning bucket at Purcell early in the season. Hey, we was hey, it, it, it was a game winner because we was in the game. Yes, no, Shout they were hard. Notre Dame gave that game away. Hey, shout out, Indy. You know, we're going to be competitive now. Man, it so the, year. the departure or the, the uh, not, yeah, departure of Clarence Lewis from the program left. Um, what are your thoughts about Clarence Lewis jumping into the transfer portal? This is like days after Ben Morrison uh, was out for the spring with the shoulder injury. Injury. Like, what are your thoughts, man? Does that, does that signal something in your mind that Ben is out for the spring, he steps in and is getting reps with the ones, you know, as Ben's backup, and then, like, a practice later decides, man, 
it's time for me to get out of here. You know, well, you, what's the tea leaves for you in that? You know, you be in the desert sometime and you're real thirsty and then you just look out one time and you see this mirage, a uh, 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 potential. It's like an oasis in the distance. And then when you get closer and closer, it ends up being nothing. And I think that's what Clarence Lewis got an experience of. He saw that mirage of, oh, this is a potential starting spot. Not knowing the whole time, oh, Ben Morrison coming back. And when he come back, I can't get this 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 flavor, this taste out my mouth because I'm, I'm already I'm already thinking it's my spot. So he said, must have proved to himself, okay, I can I can be a starter on the top defense. I don't have to sit behind this first rounder. I can go do my thing somewhere else. And plus, his tumultuous run, half the half the fan base didn't want him for quite some time. He was in the DJ Brown territory. So I think he's taking advantage of, 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 of seeing that oasis and said, I can go get a real thing somewhere else. But it's, it's shout out to him. You know, I think if anything, he probably had a little birdie in his ear. He probably saw how the depth chart was moving in some other places. Mm. Like, man, took that leap of faith. You know, he's at Notre Dame now. He went to the Basilica a couple of times had to pray on it. He said, is this where I need to go? Show me a sign. And I think that sign was him getting them reps when Ben Morrison went down and he said, I can do it somewhere else and be a star. Because it's going to be hard to be a star on this defense this year because you got to play a role in this team. Maybe you can go be Michael Jordan somewhere else. Maybe you go to your Illini right down the street. They can use it. Since uh, Devin Witherspoon ain't there, they can use it. So, you know, I think it's more power to him. It makes the job a little easier because depth chart gets a little thinner get guys more experience, and you see a guy like Christian Gray coming up, he must have watched his highlight tape. He must have saw that Christian Gray highlight tape and said, I'm in trouble. Because Christian got the length, he got the athleticism, he got the knowledge, the know-how, and he worked hard. And he's young. And they're going to probably, they probably had to, they probably talked to him and said, listen, you're going to play in a lot of this capacity this year. So, you know, I think Clarence saw the tea leaves himself. He said, it's going to be a rough year for me. If I don't make a move now. I look at this because someone in the chat said this. Why didn't Clarence Lewis? Clarence Lewis, what is the move before make? Check, right? And chess, when you hear your opponent say check, it's like, all right. Like, hey, 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 pay attention. This, this is almost over, dog. You're in the danger zone. Yeah. And I think someone... He might have heard check. He, he might have heard check. check. See, because, you know, people are saying, man, maybe he can play nickel. Uh, Jordan mm -hmm. Clark and Michael Bell. Michael Bell. Michael Bell out there making plays now. Okay, maybe he can move to safety. Uh, uh Xavier yeah, Watts, a John <laughs> Schuler, 25. I mean. Hey, and that goes yo, back to that Hallage, window. College, minutes. Window, we talked yeah, about it. It's like, dude. That window's a real thing. And that window must have closed on him, and he saw it. He was like, oh, mm -hmm. hell no. <laughs> yeah. He saw that class coming in and had a freshman. He said, oh, hell no. I'm not about to get jerked around and have, and have these conversations with coaches mid-season on why I'm not playing. Because I see the window, and I missed it. It closed right, right when I was about to get through it. That was it. And that's what happens when you're on a team that has a program that's on the up and up. Mm -hmm. If you're not a young guy or, or a generational talent, you, you, you got to sift through the weeds a little bit. And at the end of the day, Clarence knows himself. He knows himself enough to know that this is not the place where I'm going to get the most out of myself. Because mm. we got a lot going on right now. And there's no shame on him. It's more the fact of you got to go find where your best fit is. Life is about fit. That's what that's I'm making a shirt like that. Life is about fit. You got to find the right fit to really put you in the right position. It don't really matter about being the best or not. You got to have the fit. And Clarence said, I don't fit in these jeans. These is a 32, 38. You know what I'm saying? I'm still, I'm 5'8. So them, them things flooding on me. I got to go get the right size. I got to get the right fit. And Notre Dame at this juncture, we move into a different stratosphere. We're not, we not living on the excuses and living on uh, uh, the woulda, coulda, shoulda bins because we already got rid of that. DJ Brown, F07, is out of here. We're bringing elite talent in. We're bringing guys that aren't missing that window. So 
Heat, unfortunately, uh, fortunately, unfortunately, I think he made the best decision for himself in terms of maximizing this last year. And that's what it's about. You got to find that right fit to maximize. It's going to be hard to maximize at Notre Dame right now if you beyond that window. You got Leonard Moore. You got a guy, Carson Hawks, coming in. Yo, check. And you look in that room, it, it, he look in that room and be like, man, you tall, you tall, you tall, you fast. You f-. Yeah, he, he like, man, I don't fit with the, with the group of, of – I don't fit with this pack of Lions. This pack of Lions a little bit more athletic, a little bit bigger. They coming in bigger than me, you know. So it's a it's a testament to Marcus Freeman not having to necessarily have those conversations no more. Guys are just seeing it. They see the writing on the wall. You know, they're getting back to that, that, that the unspoken conversation. Oh, yeah, that depth chart looking like that. Okay. <laughs> I know how this story ends. He's been around long enough to know. He done seen guys miss the window for various reasons. So good for him for making the decision early. And hopefully he finds somewhere better, you know, somewhere he get get off at. Yeah, David Jones has a question. David, thanks for tapping in as always. So since the coaching staff has been rotating Christian Gray and Jay Mickey at the same corner spot with C. Lou playing the M spot that Chance Tucker, Chance Tucker now get the reps. He was getting, uh, yeah, he gets the reps now. Leonard Morris coming. See, you, there's a trend in this defensive back room, man. You have a guy that can evaluate and coach the position. Let me tell you something. Left says it all the time. If you haven't made Chance Tucker hasn't made his impact. That window, of Chance Tucker is real small. Leonard Morris window <laughs> is real wide. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Carson Hobbs window is really wide. Over. They, got a lot of coach that would allow you to play early. You know they're good because he evaluated them. That's right. That's all. Hey, Chance better take advantage of what whatever's left in the screen. Hey, I'm saying, and that's and that's and that's just a testament, like we said, to a program that's in year three. Mm-hmm. We not Texas A and M in year one, but we got to figure out depth chart, figure out who's good, what what they can do for the team, who got the value, who don't, what the window is. The window over there is big as hell. It's like them uh, the, the, the windows and them stained glass basilicas, big. For Notre Dame, you know, we're in a position where we're getting very specific, very specific. We fill in specific spots, like a receiver room. We fit in the right room in there, like the quarterbacks. We're getting the right quarterbacks in there. And for a guy that is realizing that the talent below him might be an avalanche he can't stop, I think he was progressive. He was he was ahead of the game. He said, let me go ahead and get out of this, get out, get off this track before this train come down. I can't stop. And I really appreciate somebody that can acknowledge themselves and not get lost in the whole Oh, this is a team effort thing. Like, no, this is 2024. You gotta go get your gotta go get right. <laughs> Cause you can. Before you couldn't. I know there's a lot of teammates of mine that wish they could take advantage like Clarence Lewis and dip out in the midst of what's going on and leave like a thief in the night. Because at the end of the day, you can tell if you on the team, you can just sit. You just it's a feel. You walk in that locker room, you cut the tension with a knife. Oh hell, my job is up. My job is uh up for the grabs, and I and I'm and I'm starting in last place, and nobody's gonna necessarily tell you. You're not gonna say like, "Oh, Clarence, you about to." Uh. It's usually when you're doing the best. <laughs> mm. That's what that's what kill you. You're doing the best. Oh, I'm at the top of my career. Listen, it's about that window, and I'm glad that uh he realized that in the spring. I'm I'm expecting a couple more guys to jump in that portal. Come on now, make it make Marcus Freeman life a lot easier. He ain't trying to have these t- difficult conversations because you want to hang around. You got to read the room. You know what I'm saying? Move around. As you always say, love, change your life. <laughs> hey. Change your life. <laughs> change your life. You got to. If you don't change your life and the opportunity comes at Notre Dame, you might as well go ahead on. 
Yeah. <laughs> you buy this well, you just because you wouldn't. Because yeah. once you and miss if, it, it's over with. And think over. about, look, so how thin do you think that window is at a Georgia or an Alabama? Oh, well, Alabama's open. That thing open. I don't know, you know. But for Georgia. I don't know, bro. <laughs> for Georgia, <laughs> even more, though, because they start in freshman day one. Oh, it's wide open now with the new coaching staff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, that, I, man, I that's been wide open. Yeah, 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 yeah. But at Georgia, oh no, that's why all the five stars be leaving. They like, oh, the, oh, it's not open today. Okay, we out. We ain't even gonna, we ain't even gonna play with it. <laughs> and that, and that's a good thing that Kirby got because Kirby can always reload and replace right now. Oh, we leave, we losing the five star because he ain't starting. He, he upset. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right because we got coaching too. Mm-hmm. That's the that's the other thing that they missing is that we got the coaching to bring the guys up, elevate the guys on that level too. So it's one of those things where Notre Dame is in that same realm. If you don't come ready to play, it's gonna be tough sledding because the amount of talent that we bringing in supersedes some of that. Guys like ready made players. Mm-hmm. That's how you win championship. We're recruiting ready made guys today. Jay Nosberry, Drake Bowen, and everything after that. These guys coming in like, yeah, I'm ready to get in there and strap the pads on. I'm not trying to sit here and be a mentor. Be a, I'm sorry, a mentee. Mm-hmm. I ain't trying to look around and 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 try to build on my frame coming in fresh. No, no, this not this is not our day of twenty what twenty fifteen. Mm-hmm. Are they coming at one thirty five, soaking wet, and leave an NFL guy? No, oh, no, no! You gotta be an NFL guy coming in. That's the that's the difference. Yeah, you gotta be an NFL guy coming in. This whole building you from the ground up. Listen, we 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 we, we want tens and betters. Lucky Lucky Podcast. Let's get to a love. Let's our three stories, like the prize stories, things that kind of made us say, hmm. "Let me put the antenna up." You know, pay attention to this a little bit more. Tune in a little bit more. I want to talk about something Mike Denbrock said earlier this spring. See, at this moment, I know we have an unbelievable top five defense. So uh, being the offensive coordinator, when you know you've got that sort of, uh, you know, ability on the other side of the ball does make your life a little bit easier and calms your nerves a little bit. Um, with that said, that that's that's our goal is to get to the level of how the defense played. I mean, we 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 can be a top uh, five offense just like they can be a top five defense. And um, you know, Coach Golden obviously is is remarkable at what he does and how he does it. And um, I love the scheme that they use um, and, and how multiple it is. And we're we're going to implement something very similar on the offensive side of the ball. I see this is man threefold left. Uh, just that one clip is threefold. First of all, the idea I might then brought to be like, yo, we got a top five defense. But yo, a <laughs> top man, coach in Notre Dame actually saying top five offense in the nation left. Stop the press. Stop. Stop. First, we get a kid to tell us y'all disrespecting me with that fourth one. Right. You hey, excuse us. We hey, we don't even get four four around here a lot. We apologize. We're happy with the four four, but by all means, run four three and show out. By That's all right. means, put up 70, 80 catches with a thousand yeah. yards and ten touchdowns. By all That's means, right. yeah, we ain't gonna stop you. Go don't ahead threaten with your us for a good time. Don't, That's right. Don't, don't threaten us for a good time. <laughs> and now you get Mike Denbrock coming in like top five, top five. Ladies and gentlemen, and I'm not talking about the defense. I'm talking about the offense. We already got the top five defense, top five offense. And then on top of that, what are we getting? What is it bringing up this spring? That's the story. Punch, counter punch. Offense punches. Defense comes back the next practice, counter punches. Offense comes back, counter punches the defense. Like, okay. Yo, I don't, as someone that's been watching the last three years during the spring left, I've seen that as you've been one side of the ball dominating the majority of the spring. This right here is the manifestation of real competition. That's right. And depth showing up in Notre Dame. I have to admit, love, I like it. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm drawn in. 
You I truly like getting the balance. You get you right. getting to see that 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 true overall skill. We not just a, a, a one sided one trick pony anymore. And I think Denbrock understands that because one, he's been there before. He's seen what a good offense looks like. He's coached a Heisman with all type of first round talent. LSU just didn't have a top five defense last year. So for a guy to come in and, and have a knowledge base of what we got and where we're going and who we have already, top fives around the board. And you can appreciate that because Marcus Freeman has been building this for two years. He's been he's been working on this for two years. And when you can can maintain a retention factor like Marcus Freeman has, probably one of the highest in the country on staff and players. And today is 2024 and the volatile situation that is with the transfer and the leaving early and the sitting out of games and all this and that, NIL. Marcus Freeman's best asset is that he has retention. And when you have retention on top of development, you're going to have top five. When you're getting guys that can go to the league that want to come back, you're going to have top five. You're going to have guys that are, are coming, coming up the right way. And so Denbrock knows he's sitting on a pot of gold. He, he, he went from the, the end of the rainbow and saw that pot of gold and said, let me, let me go ahead and cash in. And whenever you got a defense that's top five, you know you're going to get the ball back. <laughs> he like, he like Denbrock's like, we're going to be top five because we're going to have short fields. We're going to be playing the 30 in. <laughs> and especially if we're getting sacks. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, the, it's the sky's the limit, and and it's really why it's really why we talked about. There's no excuses this year because we can't find one. We have the advantage in a lot of different areas that we couldn't say we had just last year, and a lot of advantage over teams that we're playing this year that don't have the same level of where we are right now. So it's the balancing act that we've been waiting for, but also the execution uh, part. It's going to come because we got the right coaches in place. Remember, we were disorganized from the top down, not from the team down. Now we're getting the top right. It's going to trickle down onto the team. We're just following the formula. What is the formula of success for defense? You got to have the right coaches, you got to have the right players, and you got to keep them around and develop them. So for us, offensively, we follow the same, follow the same route, recruit in the right areas, find the right fits, and get the right coach back. It's, 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 a, it's a match made in heaven. And I think for a guy like Denbrock, he's at ease a little bit because he knows he can take a little more chance. He can, he can, he can, he can be a little bit more creative. He isn't coaching with one hand behind his back because he knows that the defense is going to get his back. The defense is going to get the ball right back. So when you talk about top three offers in the country, Notre Dame is, is top two, maybe not two. Because you get everything you want. You got the staff. You got the schedule. You got the coach. You got the school. So, yeah, now what Notre Dame has to do is just to produce wins. And winning in style. Make winning cool again. We're not a slow roast uh, a slow roast kind of team. We Instapot. We hot. We the entertaining value on, on the college football level this year. And we and we should take and embrace that fully. Something else left before we get to the second story. Second surprise story of the spring. Is that you can really connect what's happening with what Gino Badouli has already set in place at the quarterback position, which I think is one of the key things, right? We questioned the hire. We thought it was important because Notre Dame has not had a quarterback coach in a long time. We thought it would be a good hire. Coming from Cincinnati, we didn't know the impact Gino Badouli would have. But let me tell you something. The young men that are being recruited in the 25 class and the 26 class, along with the improvement in Kenny Minchie and also Steve Angeli, man, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. He's paying dividends. Even if it's only in measurements, sir. If all we can hold on to is the fact that our quarterbacks are no longer 5'10 and 5'11, I'm here for it. Bro. I'm here for it. Yeah, Regino's recruiting, Regino's recruiting guys that look like Gino. 
Give me, give me some of them tall, them yeah. tall freakazoid. That look like uh, real quarterbacks that have a possibility of being a first round pick. How about that? From a just a eye, a eye contest. Yeah. Not, not all oh, this brother. He may be short, but he packs a punch. We ain't going with that no more. It, 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 that was left in 2015 with me. <laughs> he pack a punch at six feet. No, no, no. We're gonna, we're gonna look the part and play like the part. And that reflects on the team overall. We're bringing in guys. That's ready to play now. Mm-hmm. Not guys that we're bringing in as a project. That's a three star that we like. Oh, we see something nobody else sees. No, no, no. We's getting people that everybody sees. That everybody wants. And we're gonna take that. We're gonna mold it, do it the Notre Dame way. And now you get you get a, a very special product that is hard to find. It's hard to find a level of consistency like this at the level we are. In college football. So my question is, before we move on left, do you believe do you believe Marcus Freeman now? Remember all the people that said Marcus Freeman, he just wants to control. He wants all the control of the offense. He's just he's stuck. All he wants to do is run the ball. You still you still believe that? You still believe in that? The man continues to go after quarterbacks. He wasn't satisfied with Drew Pine and Tyler Buckner. You think he's making all these moves and recruiting these type of quarterbacks to run the ball 60% of the time? You think he mm-hmm. went and got the dude that brought out one of the most prolific offenses in the history of college football with the highest end winner and two first round wide receivers in this year's NFL draft? You, you think he really went out and got Mike Denbrock when he wanted to go get him last year and Denbrock really wasn't ready? You think mm-hmm. he went a second time to the well because he wants to run the ball 60% of the time. You remember when Notre Dame fans on Mark? Martin Freeman doesn't want to score. He doesn't want to score points. He just wants to play defense and keep it close. All right. You still hey. feeling that way? You still thinking that way? He told you when he first got the job, I know where I want the offense to go, and it's not where we are today. He, he told, told you guys. Yeah, he, he was flat out you. honest. He was flat out honest. Last year, he told you in the press conference before the season, he said, this may not be what I want, but it's going to get the job done right now. Mm-hmm. Which means the man had vision. The man was thinking ahead of the game. He was reading between the lines. He said, okay, I can see what we can do, but I know where we can go, and that's going to take another year. That's all. That's all. He must have He must have been in Denbrock's pocket the whole time. He said, just time, take right? your time. He said, take your time, then, bro. James, let me, let me get scriptural for a second. Let James <laughs> 1 and 4 tell us. If you're a believer, you know it. Yes, sir. Like, you have to let patience have its perfect work. That's right. That you will not be left wanting for nothing. You got to have patience, man. Big things take patience. You can't rush everything, man. I know. Uh, look. I'm there with you. It's been a long time, Notre Dame fans. It's been a long, long time. So, I, I mean, look, I understand. You probably don't even want to, want to hear the word patience from mm. your brother. Mm. You, don't, you don't want to hear the word patience from me. I know you don't. I know you don't. I know you don't. <laughs> but, you, yo, you're going to have to live it, man. You're going to have to walk in it. You're going to have to bask in it for a little while longer. It's going to take a little more patience. To get what we want long term, right? Because Marcus Freeman didn't make short term decisions. He didn't rush those youngsters that he drafted. That were, I mean, not drafted, recruited at linebacker that were more athletic. Clearly, from the first day they got to Notre Dame, they were more athletic than the linebackers they had. He fought off the temptation, left. He fought off. He said, "No, no, 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 no. I'm gonna make sure that when the time is right, I'm gonna be patient." So we can get to the perfect work of this football program. Yeah. Be patient. I'm not gonna rush the offense. Yeah, for what? But be patient. Okay, I didn't get them Brock last year. I didn't get Love Week. I'm gonna be patient. Mm. Go back to the well a second time. Be patient. I get it. man. Look. One thing we did not hear, we heard a lot of things about coaches that were leaving. Or people that were leaving, players, coaches, and Marcus Freeman said, yo, we, we wanted to keep them here. 
I don't think I've heard Marcus Freeman say, we want to keep Jared Parker. We oh, asked no. him to stay. No. Mm -mm. Mm. That was the opportunity. He heard that great news. Like, oh, they want you. Troy wants you. Woo. Let me call. Hey. They said, you want me to get girl? Get, 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 girl get, get them Brock on the phone. Oh, yeah. Don't play with it. Get Denbrock on the phone, man. Man. So as so, soon as he, came, he turned in his resignation papers, he went straight to his assistant and said, hey, uh, hey, pull up the black book. Mm. Make that make that phone call real quick. Yeah. Because it ain't it ain't nothing but the but a but a phone call. Put out that roll of decks. Oh, you leave it? Oh, okay. I was I was just about to make a call anyway. Give me my give me my phone. Give me the bat phone. Give me the bat phone. It's time to go. And, and it, it didn't take long. Yeah. What, it was a month. Most teams take two or three months searching, finding, looking. We got on the bat phone. Yep, it's time. Yep, just opened up. Go ahead. Yep. Okay. All right. Go that quick. Then bro, I come to come to the campus. What do you say? It's Notre Dame. What you mm -hmm. what you mean? They called me on the bat phone. I answered. They said it was time and I came. What they say? It was like going to Mecca. It's the Mecca of college football. They even took that journey. Mm-hmm. He said, I got to return to the homeland. That's all Denbrock did. That's why he wasn't, he didn't, he didn't hesitate. Think about this. The man won a Heisman, top offense, two first round receivers, damn near three first round players. And you just leave that willingly? It get deep. Mm -hmm. It get deep when talking about that love for Notre Dame. It get deep when you know that, that real benefit. Let, let Denbrock do that at Notre Dame. He going to forget he went to LSU. He gonna forget because it means a little bit more. It's one thing to do it at a, it's one thing to do it. And it's nothing to do it at Notre Dame. Yeah, you can win a championship at a LSU, at a Clemson, at, at a Alabama. You can win those. But win a championship at Notre Dame. It outweighs. Outweighs the level of difficulty. Out it outweighs. It means a little bit more. You put that thing on the center mantle. You don't put the Notre Dame championship on the side in the glass case. You put that thing right in the middle. Oh, yeah, this is it right here. Boom. Right? Notre Dame wins the championship. Notre Dame fans can talk trash off their championship for at least five years. At least. At, at least. least. Five years. At, at least. Five years. You know, we can go nine and four the next season. Don't matter. Don't matter. You said it couldn't be done. You said it couldn't be done at Notre Dame. Be. That's you right. said Marcus Freeman couldn't do it. You said it couldn't be done as an independent. Yeah, boy. No, they ain't fans. I'm hey, you have full permission. If and when it happens, talk your talk your ish. Oh, because you know we are talk your ish for years. Stand on the net. The entire landscape of college football. Let them have it. Facts. Number two, left. Surprise. 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 How fast. The Notre Dame quarterback room has changed for him. I don't know if it's a bunch of makeup. I don't know if it's strobe light because we still have to see it on the field left. Mm. I don't know if we dancing with a girl that looks good all night and then once the lights come on, it's like, oh, no, nah, you can't mm. come home with me. No. Mm -hmm. no, 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 no. We have to see it on the field. We have to see it on the field. Notre Dame fans, some are dancing with Riley Leonard this offseason. Some are dancing with Steve Angeli. Some might even be dancing with Kenny Mitch. Viewer might be dancing with CJ Carr. But everybody's dancing with somebody. Not like back in the day when we used to see the Notre Dame quarterbacks standing by themselves in the middle of the dance floor. Like, man, mm -hmm. ain't nobody going to dance with Tyler? Ain't nobody going to dance with Sam? That's crazy. Yeah, you the quarterback. True. Ain't nobody asking you to dance, not doing nothing? Right, right, right. Oh, everybody's dancing with someone. Yeah, everybody got a day. Yeah. Everybody in the fan base has their faith. Everyone. Understand. That's different. That's, and that's a story. Man. That, that's a story. It's different. It registers in practice. It registers amongst the team. It has registered amongst the fan base. The quarterback position at Notre Dame has changed. Big it's time. changed, left. That's a, that's a story this spring. 
That's absolutely a story. Story number three. Chris Mitchell, we're sorry, bro. We're sorry. And you showed me immediately. Okay, you might be a dude. You might be a guy. You might be a guy. I said he was a one, he's a one B player. Yeah, you you said, said he's a one B, left. You said a one B. You said one B, but left. I'm I'm here to tell you, man. I don't know. I, I can I can see eight touchdowns. I can see eight touchdowns minimum. Barring injury. I can see it. I can see it left. It's a big story. The wide receiver room, which is in connection with Mike Brown, which is in connection with the departure of the former wide receiver coach left. But there's a connection, right? There's a connection, yeah. Next to the wide receivers looking better. With the talent being brought in, with the talent that's being recruited, you see Michael Gilbert getting love. You see Cam Williams getting his own show each and oh. every week. Cam Williams, so. The wide receiver room is coming front and center at Notre Dame. That's a that's a change. It's a direction change. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a first round talent in the wide receiver room, though? No matter what class, do you see a first round talent in the Notre Dame wide receiver room? I don't know. We got to play now. We, we, we talking about performance. How we look? We look great. We look great. Fiat's look great. Mm. But they don't perform great. <laughs> BMWs look great. But don't ride no BMW in the Midwest if you want to. Bro, let me tell you something. My <laughs> man, the Mitchell's had a 750. <laughs> And I had nothing but problems with that. Bag. It That's was right. sweet. The it was sweet. was sweet. The ride was sweet. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. She had black on black. Mm. Black on sweet. black. Sweet. sweet. Nice. Headaches. You around like you a superhero in that one. Headaches. Oh, yeah. You were in the shop every other week. Man. But it looked nice. So when you talk Beautiful. about first round, we got the look. We got the makeup, yeah. we got the depth, we got the competition, the passion. We got guys feeling disrespected on a 4-4 four, four when they are 4-3 low. We got the look, but performance is a whole different thing. I tell you what, when Charlie Jones was in that room, they didn't look the, they didn't look the part, but they performed the part. Mm -hmm. It was all reliable. Charlie Jones didn't just catch it. What, he had 80 catches that year? Outperformed the whole room. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we looked the part. But can we perform how we look? That's the question. So if we, is it first round potential talent? Absolutely. We got first round talent all littered all through the team, but they gotta execute. Ben Morrison executed. JB Watts executed. JT, come on, big dog. Jordan Faison, come on, big dog. We just need a little bit more. We need we need that that guy to shine like we are in his practices, like we feel about this team, how we recruit it. And Mike Brown's gonna pull it out. Mike Brown's gonna find he's gonna find something. He's gonna find that dog in the room. But I do think it's potential. But we, <laughs> I gotta see how that quarterback receiver relationship look too. I'm glad you said that, love. Because you know, someone in the chat brought up Tobias, how good he looked. Man, let me be honest. Be, Tobias, Tobias shows the wrong school. I don't think Tobias, time. I don't think Tobias looked at the quarterback room. Hey, look, if my game is speed, I, I need to see some quarterbacks in the room that can get it to me. No, they ain't gonna have a quarterback in that room that can get it, that can take advantage and of the talents of Tobias Merriweather. No, he wasn't equipped no. with the ability no. to take advantage. No, nah, every time Tobias made a big play, he had to slow down for the ball. Every time. Go go look at every deep ball Tobias caught. He had to slow down for the ball. Quarterback, wide receiver like that, you better have a quarterback that can get it out there. Or at least an offensive game plan 
that can get you the ball. Yeah. That's, yeah. We, we had guys that couldn't fulfill the job requirements. We had guys sitting in positions that couldn't do the and perform the job at the maximum level. Mm-hmm. We had guys that came in being like, okay, so teach me how to play. No, no. We must have, we didn't read resumes the right way with these, with these last couple of years. We read the resumes now. We got guys coming in ready to go. We got guys calling up to the school being like, can I intern? Can I, I see y'all let somebody go. Can I, can I come up and intern? Can I come up and see what's going on? Can I come fix your problem? Kenny Minchie? We got guys being like, oh, oh, I know I'm on the same team as him. Y'all recruiting him and all, but I'll commit right now. I got to be there. CJ Carr. Dude's nice. Said, I ain't worried. I ain't, I'm committing early. I'm getting this out of the way because I know if I go here with Gino and, and Den Brock and Marcus Freeman, dreams come reality. I, he can foresee that. All the way in Mississippi. He's like, oh, 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 I don't even need to. No days where I need to go. So the potential of what they see in the vision of the development and all things included. Marcus Freeman has built the ecosphere, the environment, the culture, the program to go in there and succeed if you just do what you got to do. I'm just saying. Man, lucky lucky podcast, man. Is it simple as that? Now, it took me a while, but I had to go some find something defensive because it's like the defense is just locked in, dominating, you know, multiple practices. He's saying, man, what's the story on the defensive side of the ball? Oh, the young linebackers left. The young linebackers. We finally get the unveiling of the young linebackers. And a lot of people left. Might be skeptical, right? They might be excited. But at the end of the day, we'll finally get to see what these young men end up looking like. This is what Max Bullock had to say though, left. I'm not looking at it much different. I, I solely looked at this last year like I was a linebacker coach. So I'll be honest with you, I'm not looking at it different. It's a lot different room than it was last year. Okay, we had a lot of guys that played a lot of snaps last year, guys that basically could teach me the defense when I came in here, right? And so when I go to meetings, I could kind of lean on them and those sorts of things. Well, that's gone. We have Jack Kaiser, who may be the smartest of the bunch that's still here, but there's a lot of guys, you know, Kingston, Kia, even Drake, Snead, Jaden, you know, all those guys that haven't really played a lot. So it's going to be a little bit more coaching involved. But I think that's also fun because it kind of gives me the opportunity to put my spin on it. You know what I mean? And they say that the room takes over the, you know, the mentality or the personality of the position room or the position coach. And I think this year is really my first year to get the chance to do that. Oh, he's saying the linebackers, they're going to play like me. They're going to have an attitude like me. We're going to the football field, baseball field. We walk around this campus. You're going to know. That's a Notre Dame linebacker left. You talk about that all the time. Used to walk around campus and not even know it was a Notre Dame football play. You couldn't tell. Oh. I think yeah, that we, attitude's starting to change. That's right. That's right. We're gonna start going around and running things. And that's it's a mentality. You know, the whole perspective of oh, we good old Jolly Willikers, four for 40 guys. That's out of here. That's out of here. We got the macho, macho man. What's that song called? I wanna be a macho man. That's what we're getting to. That's what we get into. They going around campus being like, what, 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 what kind of circus is this? We pulling out guys that all shapes and sizes, all tall and strong. That's what we that's what we get into. And Max Bullock has the personality to carry that in the room. The room can cultivate meat off of that. Drake, Drake Bowen going to baseball being like, damn, I I gotta I gotta be a little bit a little bit tougher, a little bit stronger. I gotta represent something when I leave that meeting room, leave that that Google, leave that uh, that practice facility. We walking around all day, like we the big dog on campus. Not girls basketball, not the baseball team, not lacrosse. We turn into what Notre Dame was built off of, and that's that football program. And guys gotta and guys gotta embrace that. We got a super chat left. This is pretty interesting. Where 
D month, Mr. Poole, love and thank you for the super chat. Where does sophomore Malik Zaire fit in this current quarterback room? So if you were competing in this quarterback room, sophomore Malik Zaire left, where would you fit? Oh, that's championship know? league time. That's see, that's a that's a different that's champion. That Malik was in prime condition. We was ready and primed up to win that thing right then and there. My attitude was different. So, you know, it's still a little too fun loving in the room. I gotta see how that shakes out in camp and competition. But I was man, I was ready to go. So yeah, I, it would have been that two, answer. two Dayton yeah. guys. Come on now, Dayton, Dayton head coach, Dayton quarterback, man. Like Diddy said, we won't stop, won't stop, won't quit. Yeah, we on that right now. No Diddy on that. <laughs> I don't think you hear nothing about Diddy. Won't stop, won't quit. <laughs> yeah, let's find somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> I got Pierre. Linebackers are always a little touch. Yeah, it's a lot of touch people on a football team, if you if you ask me. I That's think right. defensive lineman a little touch. Like your boy Latimer from the program. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Touch individuals on a football field. I think you have to be touched to play the game of football, honestly. You got to. Man. Got to. Number five, Marcus Freeman. I think Marcus Freeman is a huge story. All season going into, I, I don't know if he feels pressure. I don't know if he's thinking about it. I think he understands and has spoken for him to bring up Texas A&M during the spring in his press conference. He's very well aware of how big this opening game is. Like he, he knows. knows. Like he knows it's, it's all about the playoffs. But he knows. He got to get through that first one, and then we off and rolling. Like, we need to win this one. We need to win this one. This could really get us on the right track for our ultimate goal. And like I said, for him to come into the press conference in the spring and to mention, yo, his preparation starts now. It's definitely starts now. He yeah. he understands that if he can get through the first one, he can just ride through the through the rest of this ride just how it's supposed to be because he set it up right. He just got to make sure he turns all the lights on, sets the stage, you know, make sure everybody's in place, and then it's gonna play out because we got all the all the other pieces figured out for the most part. We got the attention to detail. We got guys that that want to be there. And we got the talent to match what we're doing on the coaching staff and the talent that we got in that's uh, developing our guys each and every day. Each and every day. So it's, it's really good to see. Do you think that Mark Trim going into his third season on the tail end of Michigan winning the way they won? Does that make Notre Dame fans a little more – Impatient, or do you think they still subscribe to it's going to take time? Because we asked people last year, when do they think the championship is going to happen? And everybody pretty much earmarked 2025. That was pretty much the question. 2020, I mean, the answer 2025. I really believe 2025 is going to be the year. But Marcus Freeman every year really has had the expectation of yo, we can we can win. We're going to have to do it this way. The room for error or the margin of error might be a little bit slimmer, but we can still do it if we play the way we're supposed to play. Now I think there's a wider margin for error because of the talent and the added depth, but the expectation is still the same. Playoffs win it all. So I think if, I wish people could really be there I wish they really put at least one of the practices on Peacock. That's like the next step, right? Because as the media, we at this point only get two full practices. And the media, we're asking like, yo, extend our access, even if we don't have a full practice from five to maybe seven periods, or at least let us be the first remnants of live. But I think it would go even further if even if it was delayed, left, like recorded, 
and release it. So you won't have to worry about people seeing injuries and things of that nature. You know what I'm saying? Like, make it a production. Like, draw them in. You know, this is what we do. We give great ideas on Lefty Lefty Podcast. They went out and did, you know, the show that's coming in the future, right, in the fall. That's going to be following the Notre Dame team, which they, they did while you were there as well. So it's really the return of it. Mm. What was it? Because they did it the year you were injured. And it was like an inside access. I forget the name of it. I definitely, I definitely agree. We should put one of those practices on Peacock. Absolutely. Just like a, a mic, a wired up, a mic'd up. Just have like a three-part series. Look, don't take our idea, Peacock. Look, Under Armour already stole it, didn't cut us no check. You know, <laughs> so we, you know, they're with the Marcus Freeman line. Look, they, they, they hear us, but they ain't paying us. So that's a whole different thing. But the, the TV show was great because you really got to, to, to buy in just to the, the season itself. It's one thing to play through the season, whatever, but now you got the cameras on you all day. Everything you're doing, they're watching, they're they recording, they do interviews, they trying to find stories. So you, you really buying into the fact that this is, this is really a movie. This is really yeah. what 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 makes coming to Notre Dame so great because of the fact that the attention in the spotlight is at an all time high. If you're competitive and you're passionate, that's exactly where you want to be because it's going to take you to the next level. You feel more important. You feel like it means a little bit more to do well in practice because you you will get exposed. <laughs> but more so than anything, it's just it's the it's the gratefulness that you have being there knowing that all these things are happening as you just playing football. Yeah. You can't find that anywhere else. The entertainment value, half of football is entertainment. You get mm -hmm. the entertainment value when you bring them cameras in. You get to show a little more personality. Hell, it worked for me after school because I ended up getting the overtime job from uh, the season with Notre Dame in 20, what, 15, whatever it was. So I do think that the potential that Notre Dame has to make its own media market what it is, is great. Mm -hmm. It's great. We don't need anything else, anybody outside of what we got at Notre Dame to make us any bigger than what we know we can make ourselves. So I'm super excited to see how this TV show turns out because it probably match a lot of personalities that I feel is already on the team. Get a Christian Gray on camp. Get, oh, get he's, that a, he's, he's a straight up. He's a clown. Get, get that running back room on camera. What's that D-line talking about? You know, we going in there preaching no sacks this year. I, I doubt we put that on camera. So this is it's, it's a it's very cinematic, a cinematic feel to what this Notre Dame season can bring, similar to a 2012. That was a cinematic season with moments. This is one of the few seasons where I feel like there can be moments made. Mm. Memorable moments. They still talking about that Stanford stand in 2012. It was a great, it was a great stop. But those are the moments that people Ooh, remember. Can you imagine if they had Manti mic'd up for that goal line? Ooh. I was saying they they missed Dude, out I would money, probably man. be I would probably play that YouTube video to this day. You're and it's just missed opportunities to, to connect with the fan base, let me. Mm. Past, present, future. Past, present, future. And when I say that, I'm not talking about people that have passed away. I'm talking about people that might be elder statesmen in their fan. Thank you for Notre Dame. Like, dude, it is. You're darn right. The brand is humming. The brand is beating at an all time rate. It's like, yo, you can always be better. You can always be better. And that's the one thing I think needs to happen. I am, look, that's another surprise that we do have the hard knock show cover that they have done to wake up the echoes. What was I, we were streaming last year? We need more content on Watch ND. We need more content, Notre Dame. We need more content. Marcus Freeman going out, doing interviews, going on podcasts. Yo, this is what it is. Now we're starting to catch up. Now we're starting to catch up, right? We have the new facilities coming. And I think as the new facilities come into place, that's probably going to, you know, you step up. They're probably going to give the uh, media team a much better studio, better equipment, better te technology. I think the broadcast on a pro day could be better. 
It's cool to have Corey there. Heck, you need a guy on the field. Have a foreigner Notre Dame. You had CJ Pro site there, right? In the middle of objects on the field workout. Why wasn't CJ mic'd up? Why weren't they talking to CJ live? Talking about what all you're doing. They talking should've. about his day. They they that's yeah, Marcus Freeman at the combine. This is what that. I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about, man. Those are the next steps to really engage fans and take the brand to the next level, man. Because this plant meant plenty, as I say all the time. Plenty, plenty of meat on the bone when it, when you want to talk about Notre Dame football. Plenty of meat. We're sitting here, almost 200 people watching us right now on April the 2nd. Like, <laughs> like there's nothing, nothing popping off. Practice, we get access tomorrow. Mike Mickens and his defensive backs talk tomorrow. I'm sure he'll be asked about Clarence Lewis. We'll talk about that. I know the dang fans all over the world, dude. They, man, they're thirsty for the content, hungry for content, hungry to listen and talk Notre Dame football, bro. You don't get that. And, man, who else? Give me the other four or five programs in the nation that give you that. Maybe Ohio State. Maybe Alabama. Georgia. USC podcast, I know for a fact. They do, they're satisfied with doing two shows a week. They don't even try. They don't even try. No. Two shows a week, we're good. They're out there in L.A. just living it up. Yeah, they even forgot what they out there for. Yeah, hell, they're not worried about giving you a bunch of content. No, but this is what Notre Dame does for you, man. Gives you the opportunity to talk Notre Dame football. We appreciate it. Subscribe, YouTube, the thumbs up, smash it for us. Share, let everybody know. Lucky Lucky Podcast, audio edibles each and every day. CFB Nation, Apple Podcast, Spotify, and then Patreon.com forward slash Lucky Lucky Network. First episode of Chemistry drops this week. And also our guy, Ken Gibbs, with us, the Reese Company, talking men's and women's Final Four. And, oh, he has some things to say about the quarterbacks in the draft. Can't wait to drop that for you over at patreon.com forward slash Lucky Lucky Network. When we come back, Angel Reese, come on down. We're not even going to put you on the petty train. We're going to turn you into an entire segment. You wanted the spotlight, baby girl? You got it right here on the Lucky Lefty Podcast. Sean Davis, Malik Zaire. Man, you already know. We spend this. What's up, family? The merch shop is finally here. Lucky Lefty Network merch shop. We got it all. From the shirts to the hoodies to the hats to the nitty gritties. Come here right now. Shop with us. Come get the swag because you know, if anything else, we spin it different. You see the gritty. You see how we get down. It's elite. Lucky Lefty Podcast right here on the LL Network Patreon.com forward slash Lucky Lefty Net. Whoa, okay, Jay Illa. Wait, okay, Jay Illa. Yeah, yeah. It can work, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, Jay Illa. Official DJ of Chicago Bears. I see you. I see you. See, the Bears gonna have a good season now. Yeah. <laughs> lucky Lucky Podcast, the door boys in the building. He caught me off guard with that one. He caught me off guard with that one. He gave us the double transition. Yo, Sean Davis, Malik, <laughs> CFB Nation, Apple Podcast, YouTube, man. Lock in with the subscribe. Subscribers are coming on a daily basis. The views for the videos continue to go up. We appreciate you guys, man. You help us 
be the home of the misguided passion each and every day. And we will be committed to making sure that we continue to spin it different. Left. So you you enjoyed both of the games last night, right? All right, man. Indiana, after being down 22, came back. Uh, yo, they gave South Carolina South Carolina a run. Uh, Notre Dame came up short. Uh, Hannah just had a she just had a bad shooting night. She just picked the worst day to be be bad from the field. And, that's uh, all right. She she got time, and also she got a team that's that's up and coming now. The team is still young enough. Plus, mm -hmm. Coach Ivy gonna recruit. We just gotta recruit a couple big girls, you know, a couple tall, strong girls. Maybe get us a Cardosa or something, and we're gonna be off and running. Because if you get that. That 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 matchup with the point guard and Hannah, Hannah OVO Adago. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's gonna be up. We're gonna have Drake at the game. We're gonna have Nicki Minaj come through. Hey, we might get some politicians coming through that thing. Yo, Drake probably will come through that final four if Hannah gets that. That's right. He gotta drop some, he gotta drop some merch too. Some OVO you know, uh, Under Armour collabs or something. He got Drake, boy. No, he clout chases, boy. Oh, yeah. He now got he he jumping on, on sexy, re on sexy red, Kate, and her doggos, Kate. Man, boy, he, he's gonna keep his brand out there now. Oh, yeah. He, he, he a marketing genius. Yeah. A marketing yeah, genius. I'll, I'll give him that. He's definitely gonna keep the brand out there. So we want to uh, discuss this right here. And we're going to spin it into Notre Dame and college football. But post game, Iowa LSU, I think it was 94 87. I heard it was a very competitive game. I think it was the third quarter that made the difference, where I think Iowa outscored LSU by 15 points, if I'm not mistaken. And um, left, <laughs> your girl, Angel Reese, starting center for the LSU Tigers who famously gave the you can't see me to Caitlin Clark in last year's national championship game as they defeated Iowa. Yeah, we just got to re recap that. We got to recap that for context. Mm -hmm. Because fast forward a year later, it's a different tune. I don't know why, how it changed so fast. You know, she, her, her teammate, Flo J. Johnson, have, they've been on a whirlwind since then. NIL has greatly, but they benefited greatly from NIL. There were some troubles. Kim Mulkey had to secretly suspend her for a couple of games because of things that took place within the program. You know, it is what it is, right? You're talking about 19, 20 year old coming into money. Yeah, Angel Reese post game yesterday. I just try to stand strong, like. I've been through so much. I've seen so much. I've been attacked so many times. Death threats, I've been sexualized. I've been threatened. I've been so many things and I've stood strong every single time. And I just try to stand strong for my teammates because I don't want them to see me down and like not be there for them. So I just want them to always just know like I'm still a human. Like, all this has happened since I won the national championship. And I said the other day, I haven't had peace since then. And it sucks, And but I still wouldn't change. I wouldn't change anything. And I would still sit here and say, like, I'm unapologetically me. I'm going to always leave that mark and be who I am and stand on that. And hopefully the little girls that look up to me, and hopefully I give them some type of inspiration that, you know, hopefully it's not this hard and all the things that come at you. But... Keep being who you are. Keep waking up every day. Keep mo being motivated. Staying who you are. Staying ten toes. Don't back down. And just be confident. Go ahead, love. Go ahead, love. Man, if you don't get the blank out of here, man, what are you talking about? What are you? Angel Reese. Now you know good and doggone well that you shouldn't be up there copping these pleas like that. After you done traveled the world, he done, he done shamed Caitlin Clark into making this whole debate from a year ago. You done talked stuff on the internet. You done did the most. You done been on Sports Center Illustrated. You done did everything that you wanted to do. Everything. What you crying for? Now, my thing is, what you crying for, first of all? Second of all, why 
why are you embarrassing yourself like this? If you a champion, you what your whole your whole thing is get get out your feelings and get a bag. You didn't get a bag yesterday. So why are you with your feelings? I don't understand the the cop out. You lose, now you facing death threats. Now you being sexualized, you being threatened. Because you lost. If that was the case, you should have been saying that when you was winning. Because then it would be real. Then it'd be like, oh, she going through it. You're talking about you ain't been happy since you won the championship. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You've been making some of the most money in men and women's sports. Come on, you ain't happy. Come on now. Come on. I was born that night, but not last night. I don't want to hear that crying. Because guess what? All them people that you was poo-pooing on, all them people you so high and mighty, you 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 talking about, I'm not going to run into the fight because I got a brand. I got a name. I can't be just putting myself out there like that. Come on now. You and Flo J was like freaking frat all season. Rapping song, y'all promo. You won the breakfast club. club. Oh, yeah, you on, what you want breakfast club for? You should have been in the gym. Working on your Bingo. Job. Bingo. You should have been on the, you should have been, you over here getting suspended. I ain't hear you about you talking about, oh, death threats then? Come on, man. I'm Come trying on. to figure out how you foul out of every big game LSU had this year. Every single big game, regular season, postseason, how are you fouling out? How are you fouling Go out? Ahead, you, you Go star. ahead, love. Go ahead, love. You, you, you're star. supposed to be the star. You fouling out. You fouling out. Where your skill development at? Hmm. Where the, where, the, where, the, where, the, where, the, where the money, what the money to the to the mouth is? Can Mookie ain't get you better? Cause clearly, you got a lot of a lot of talk, a lot of gas in your game right now. I just don't understand how you go from, oh, this is the best day ever. Get out your feelings, get a bag, and twenty seconds later you crying. No man. Unacceptable. You fouling out in that big game is unacceptable. Your teammates should have been mad at you on the podium. I would have been like, wait a minute. NIL? How you got mm. looking at the stat sheet? I look at the stat sheet right on that. I'm like, wait a minute. How you how you go five fouls? How you get 10, what, eight rebounds? What? What? You supposed to be that girl. But see, you you, you running around. You let that championship get to your head. You ain't been in the gym. But I tell you who was in the gym. That girl, Caitlin Clark. <laughs> mm. Mm. You, oh, you thought she forgot. You thought she forgot all about that. You thought, Kate, you thought Caitlin Clark forgot you doing this? Where is this energy at? Where is the where is the where's the ring energy at? Where the where the where the all in the face at? You sitting on the bench with, with eight minutes left in the game. How'd that happen? You sitting on the bench, foul out, looking crazy. No, I was two about two under two minutes left. It felt like eight. Out. It felt she like eight. Foul, you in the clutch? foul trouble, though. Foul trouble. What are we talking about? Angel Reese, fake tears. He ain't, I ain't see one tear fall from your face. And no, you I, think was, I think it was real tears. It was just misguided yeah. tears, though. I'll get to that. Go ahead, love. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I just don't understand this, this thing with us athletes. When we, when we get to the bag, we get in the money, we all high, talk all time high. Oh, we doing our thing. We on everywhere and anywhere. We, we making new, making appearances on the news. We don't know nothing about what's going on in the news. And then as soon as you lose and have an embarrassing performance, now you want to talk about your mental health. Oh, Lord. I had to stay strong as I'm collecting all these bags. Oh, I had to stay strong doing all these commercials and being sexualized with clothes that I put on for TikTok. Come on, man. Look, I don't buy it. Actually, I'm selling it. I'm giving it back. But we're we, 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 we not accepting that. You lost. You didn't play great. And Caitlin Clark didn't forget. She remembered you doing She had that picture up on her wall all summer. You doing that. So all I know is that this is a short-term run for her. She's going to get into the league and be disappeared because she ain't got the skill development. She ain't got the skill development. 
So I don't know. I do think that this was a much needed loss for them. But at the same time, man, I, I just can't I can't see past all the stuff leading up into this point. Don't cry. Don't cry. Because somebody that's, got the last that's laugh. Over Rick there. Said, dude. Don't cry. Try Don't your cry. eyes. Try your eyes. Try them. Because you're supposed to be beyond this. You you next level, right? Come on, man. I'm going to need to be. I'm going to need you to be better. And Flaw J, don't stick up for it. No, oh. No, oh. no, no, no. I don't want to hear that, Flaw J. Y'all Batman and Robin out there. Y'all Batman and Robin. Y'all supposed to be till the wheels fall off. Don't be, don't be, don't be. No, 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 no. We don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear that. I just want to hear you be like, man, that was a good game. Good season. We on bigger and better. Don't be giving me this sob story. I hate that. You wasn't sobbing when you was winning. You wasn't talking about all these threats and because that's that's the thing. What you what you would have say? Oh, you was going through it. You, I don't know how you could. And then you cop out and say, "But I wouldn't change nothing, really." Oh, so you went through all that? You wouldn't change nothing? Now? Come on, right. man. You haven't learned it. That's the mic. Say all that. Thank you. Thank all you. that you talk about, and you could be like, "Shit, but I, hey, I enjoy it too." Make it. Pass it to Kim Mokey, man. Y'all, y'all tripping. Lucky Lefty Podcast, man. You done left? Man, I you just... Done? Cause, I mean, you you hit it out the park. I can't believe that, man. See, because what happened last night is that she looked up and Alexis <laughs> Morris wasn't coming through that door. No, no. See, people forget what Alexis Morris did in that national championship game that That's she right. went on to the WNBA. See, That's Hayden right. Van Lee ain't Alexis Morris. Ain't, See, that ain't, was the issue. She ain't it. Yeah, Kim Mulkey and LSU, they found out halfway through the season. Uh, halfway through? Because it because she this ain't the first bad performance she ain't had. No, no, no. She's been, she she been, been on the bench since the middle of the year. Oh, yeah. I'm here now. I'm gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she had the nerve to put her on Caitlin Clark. What? What? What kind of Kim coach Mulkey. is that? How dumb are you as a coach? What? Caitlin Clark running around like Steph Curry on them girls. Dude, Just, no, they ain't fans. Watch Van Lee get lit up. By a true freshman point, Olivia freshman. lit up. OVO Adago. Lit her ass up. Lit up. Lit up. She didn't stay in Hannah with a lit up this year. Lit her up. See, see, see the NIL done marketed them girls too good now. They didn't match the talent with the marketing. That's all it was. They didn't, they, you gotta, you gotta, it's, it's hard. It's a hard science to match the marketing with the talent. If you're going out there scoring four, seven, eight points, you're getting, getting 40 pieces put on your head. Come on now. Adidas got to look at that and be like, wait a minute. That ain't right. That ain't, that ain't representing Adidas Left. basketball. Left. No, Left. no, no, no. Left. That's why I didn't watch that game. I knew what was coming. Oh, you knew. What was coming? I saw Colorado smash LSU. I saw South Carolina smash LSU. I saw LSU lose to Ole Miss. I knew what was coming. I knew Van Hayden Van Leaf was, wasn't ready for that. She ain't built for that. Not that stage. Keep her in the She's ACC. Not for that. She should have stayed in Louisville. She wasn't built for that. Stage. It would have been fine. She would have been fine at, at Louisville. She would have been a cold hero at Louisville. She's not built for that stage. No, no, no. She's not built for that stage. And then they put her in position to, to be that girl. Man, to be the scapegoat. That's what they put in position to be. The blame. That's what they put in position to be. But let me get to this, because this is a cautionary tale. The Angel Reese last night is a cautionary tale to young men and women all over the country in this NIL landscape. Too much chip on your dip now. You have the only reason you get the bag is because you win. The only reason people are even paying attention to you, young lady, is, is because you won. That's it. That's it. <laughs> you won and you beat the giant in college football that was Caitlin Clark. That had just taken South Carolina down. That's why you got the bag. That's why Flo J got the bag. Don't get it twisted. See, you forgot what your foundation was for your That's little right. kingdom. When it, when it became... kingdom that you had. 
You forgot that winning was the foundation. That's why you should have had your tail in the gym. That's, That's why right. Kim Mulkey in the middle of the season tried to get the point across to you and sat your tail down for a couple of games. So you were loving the attention. See, don't get naked, love the attention, and then start crying, talking about the attention, talking about being sexualized. Last I checked, the people that sexualized you, they didn't post those pictures on your they Instagram. Post those pictures. Because if you was in the gym, it. you wouldn't be sexualized. If you wasn't on TikTok, you wouldn't be having that problem. Ain't nobody sexualizing Kaden Clark. Nobody. Well, no, they said she's she still getting she's NIL money NBA right now, and she's still getting NIL money, and, and she's still getting offers to play in the still. Big Three. Still. What are we talking about? Still. Of course, Ice Cube not offering Angel Reese the Big Three. She ain't good enough. What do you mean? Yeah, Ice Cube is smart. He's like, and man, ladies and gentlemen, it. by no means am I. I ratifying anybody being sexualized. I feel like any young lady should be able to go out, take hey. pictures in a bikini, to outfit, extent. show skin, do whatever she wants to do and post it on her Instagram oh, without man. being ridiculed or about the extra being placed in her comments. That's not what we're saying. You knew what was coming with that SI Swingsuit Edition. You knew. You know what social media is all about. You knew being connected, should you love being connected to Shadur? You love the rumors of dating Shadur. You love the rumors of dating all the rappers. You chose to do that. You chose that. You love being lit. You love doing the TikTok dances. You love oh, yeah. all of that. Now you want to cry because of the attention? Uh -huh. More money, more problems, baby. Biggie told you. Biggie told you. Maybe you don't have anybody around you that can be honest enough. You got a brother, you got a twin brother playing for Mary. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Maybe he was loving the money you were sending him more than you know actually telling you, hey, you need to slow down. Like Brand Nubian hey, told us back in the 90s. Slow down. Hey, baby, your hips are getting bigger. Uh, yeah. It ain't your style. And it ain't that you need to slow down. Yeah. Slow down. Slow down. My suggestion is you come back because your skills are not ready for the WNBA. Hey. Ain't ready. You can rebound. Those skills are not ready. No. Come on. You lose all that attention as soon as you go to the WNBA. Yeah. You play around. Man. See, that like NIL you. check is not going to be as much next year. Oh, no. Especially after that press conference. No. Mm -hmm. They'll be like, what? Man, give it back. <laughs> oh, you. Oh, you. You. You don't like it now. Oh, okay. Okay. We don't like losers either. How about that? So, I mean, you know, it's it's the, the great equalizer is winning football games and winning games in general. When you can't build off of that, you know different than everybody else. Well, and see, this is not – see, once again, it, people have to be – this is not about who's right, who's wrong. Man, look. Kaylin Clark ain't no angel. Kaylin no. Clark talks just as much trash as anybody else. She just, just cussed. Crazy. She literally just, just cussed dirty. out a ref. She just cussed out a ref in the tournament, literally. Just as dirty, just as and crazy. And the Brink, the Brink kid, well, she didn't curse him out, but she said something crazy to him. The Brink kid is the one that just flat out told the ref. F you. Yeah. No, not big story. I guarantee you if Flo J had done that, it definitely would have been a much bigger story. One of the South Carolina kids had done that, it definitely would have taken off. You know, they just kind of hushed that, pushed that under the table. Shh, shh, shh. We don't want to talk about that. We don't want to talk about that. Caitlin Clark, there's no need. Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese, not from a skill perspective, but them and what they're doing for the game, the attention they're bringing to the it's game, perfect. it's very similar to what Bird and Magic did. Yes. Very similar. Magic was the brash one that talked trash. Bird talked just as much trash. Go listen to any player that played on the court with Bird. He talked just as much trash. And then the debate would be the biggest trash but talk. He was classy. The way he did it was classy. Trash talk is trash talk. Man. talk I don't trash. hear that. I told y'all last year. I watched Peyton Clark in the Big Ten all the time. She talks more trash to a league full of people that she knows can't even come close to her. That's, See, right. that's my issue. Don't talk trash to the people you know you're better than. Talk trash to the, someone that you know stacks up against you. I don't do. Caitlin Clark, 
this level, she's better than everybody else. Left. You don't think of rocket science to see that, rock scientists to see that. But go up in that ocean with them sharks. That Jackie Young shark, that Enrique shark. When you gotta guard them too. Yeah, yeah them you water. gotta guard them that's, too. Yeah, that's, yeah. The, that's what I want to see. These that's waters, what really made. these waters where you're not guarding the best player, you guard the third best option on LSU's defense all offense all night, and you can just do what you want to do offensively. No, that's not the waters you stepping into, young lady. That's when that's when you're gonna prove it to me. This don't do you better than everybody else. You this maxed out. Man. You maxed you out. Dope. You dope. Might be the goat all the time as a player in college basketball. That's fine. No need to hate on that. Let's go to these deep waters now. Now let's go to these deep waters. Yeah. Let's see what that's you what really be about. got. That's oh, what yeah. Be about. Yeah, because I guarantee you a regain, Jackie. Hell, all Skyler, dogs, Skyler, I, Caleb all McBride, dogs. Kelsey Plum. They all sitting there yeah. like, yep. Yep, we waiting on you. Come on up. We waiting on you. Because you're going to have to stick us. Ain't no hot. There is no hot. Asia oh. Wilson, all them. And she's going to be blessed. Because she, oh, it's going to be her and Aaliyah Boston. That's going to be a nice combination, love. I'm not even going to lie. Brianna Indiana Steve. fans, Indiana FIBA fans. Oh, they got the first pick. Yeah. <laughs> if you're an Indiana Fever fan, boy, you might go, you might want to go get some tickets. Yeah. Because Caitlin Clark and Leah Boston, they got a chance. They have a chance. They need a lot more. They ain't they ain't doing that with Brianna Stewart now. Brianna Stewart is no, still I'm just saying league. that's a good combination to start with, though. A young, young squad. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's a good combination. But let's not man, Caitlin Clark is not a Come on, man. Her dad just told her to stop whining on national TV last weekend. Her father, stop whining. Told that damn whining. Stop talking crazy to the refs. Stop whining. Play ball. <laughs> her, her father had to tell her that. Hey, her good, hey, that's a good dad, though. Uh, man, I respect him. Oh, hey. I respect him. I don't care about none of that NIL. I don't care about that's none all, of that. Man, play the game. You man. out here looking crazy right now. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, shut up. I ain't trying to hear that. Come on, man. man. That's right. And that's all. That's right. Look, now, this is what I want to point out. I hope Caitlin Clark has changed the women's game. But I hope that the women's game, the WNBA, women's college basketball, and the lower levels, high school down, to the peewee levels. I hope they don't make the same mistake from a coaching and development standpoint that the men's game made. When Steph Curry began to do, it's very simple. It's what she's doing at Iowa is the same thing or it's very similar to what Steph Curry was doing at Davis, Making runs to the Elite Eight at Davis. Oh, I ever I heard of Davis. It's a bigger program than Davis, though. Know. That's my point. That's why I say the run he made was that's a huge run. He put them on the map, bro. Nobody knows about Davis and basketball without Steph Curry. And then he changes the game when he comes to the NBA. This is the mistake. Now the game is trash because you have lower levels learning the game, trying to emulate Steph Curry. They don't even know how to run a three-on-one fast break for a layup anymore, love. It's a shame. Pure fundamentals. You can't even see it in the NBA. You get a three-on-one, somebody shooting a crazy three. Crazy yeah, run the lane and get the layup and go back on defense. Like crazy three. Because they said, Steph, oh, the game. The game has changed. We don't play the game like that anymore. And the product is trash. The product is trash. Women's basketball at all levels. These young girls are going to want to emulate Caitlin Clark. Everybody can't beat Caitlin Clark. No. Do not ruin. Women's basketball is in a fantastic space right now. Fantastic. Absolutely, the women's Final Four might draw more eyes than the men's Final Four. Flat out. You might have the two best championship games of all time. If you see Klingon and UConn face Purdue and Zach Eady, and then the, the night before, you have Don Staley 
in South Carolina, facing Caitlin Clark in Iowa. Just basketball fans, it might be the greatest two nights in college basketball history. I'll step out on that limb, left. It flat out might be the best two days, two nights for college basketball. But do not make the mistake of allowing your game to be invaded by the foolish mindset of this is how things need to be. Because you're going to look up in five or seven years and your product is going to be trash. So you're going to have everybody running around thinking they're Caitlin Clark. Yeah. Running around. Running That's around. all Caitlin Clark do is running run around. around shoes. <laughs> running around. I like to point out. Can I point something out? Yep. Think about all of the MVP candidates, the top MVP candidates. Does Jokic, does he look like and play like Steph Curry? Does Shea Gilgis Alexander play like Steph Curry? Yeah. I just want to point out the dog. Does Anthony Edwards play like Steph Curry? I'm just trying to point out the dogs in the NBA. No, none, none of them look like Steph Curry. None of them. None of them. But you got these mid cats in the NBA trying to play like Steph Curry. The game is the game, man. Play the game. Learn the game. Get in that gym. Angel Reese, get back in that gym. Get back in that gym. Take the L. That's, that's, that's what greatness is, left. Take the L. You lost on the court. You lost in that press conference, too, but you have an opportunity to come back from it if you get back to what brought you to success, and that's winning. Get back to winning. Get back in that gym. Go back to LSU. Win two championships. No one can ever take that from you. All these people in the chat cracking jokes about you, go win two championships in college. They can't take that away from you. Can't they can take you away from jokes. you. They can call you a crybaby. They can call you a brat. They can call you classes. They can say whatever they want to say. You know what you can tell them? Take these two championships. Yep, eat them. How about that? Eat them. Eat them. Eat them. Eat them. Eat them. <laughs> but, you, them. but you can't stand on that if you, you can't stand on this social media stuff. You can't stand on this NIL. You can't stand on these TikTok videos. You can't stand on none of that. Mm -hmm. But you can stand on winning. Mm-hmm. And that's what gets you to everything you want. You standing on stuff that don't mean nothing. And now when you lose, they like, they on your head. And rightfully so. Mm -hmm. You standing on a faulty, a faulty foundation. Something that just popped up. You got away from the, the winning hill because that's sturdy. That thing going to hold you up no matter what. Man. But you stand on this, uh, this fluff. Man, this 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 uh, this nonsense, this 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 here and go type of type of fame. In reality, you gotta get back on that winning train, man. So let it be a cautionary tale to every young man and every young lady in this NIL landscape. Go get your bag, man. But go win. You go, you go to college to get an education, and you go to college to win. That's the foundation of everything. You win big, you get a big bag. That's it. Angel Reese forgot that bag came from the fact that she won. And she let go of the rope. And nothing else. I yeah, said you may, you may have a good personality, but that's not why they're giving you that. That's not, that's not why they're giving you that bag, bro. They said you beat two giants. And you the impact player? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's why left, left, you've been saying it the whole time. You've been saying, yo, the next quarterback that wins at Notre Dame, that bad? They better run for office. That bad? <laughs> Man. They better run for office. I don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't know who it's going to be. Steve, Riley, mm -hmm. it don't Kenny, even matter. CJ, Deuce, whoever it is, whomever it is, I'm going to tell you. The next Notre Dame quarterback that wins? Oh, that bag! If you man, all you Notre Dame fans that are traditionalists, and you feel like Notre football players, athletes shouldn't get paid, you might as well get out your feelings. Because I'm telling you now, the next quarterback that wins in Notre Dame, oh, that bag is gonna piss you off. 
I'm sorry to use the word piss, but I had to insert it right there, left. That bag is going to piss you off. You might as well get out of your feelings right now. Oh, I, look. My I'm telling you now. If Deuce, I, want, I if, want a brother to go in there and cash in. Put that lot of wins. Yeah. If Deuce wins at Notre Dame with his personality and his charisma, oh, the bag is ridiculous. It's going to be ridiculous. It's going to be silly. It's going to be ridiculous. It's an intensified bag. That bag going to be a lot heavier mm -hmm. than a lot of these other players. You thought Caleb mm -hmm. Williams was balling. No. He was balling. But, man, put a Notre Dame guy man, in there. Boy, that, man, you're going to see the quarterback in uh, State Farm commercials. You're going to see uh, uh, Elder State commercials. Man. That man going to be in these, these, these top elite meetings. Man, going to have his own shoe. Amazon yeah. commercials, whatever. Top brand, you name it. Peacock going to put him on the, on the face of everything. I'm telling you. They're going to give him his own spinoff show. Man. He's going to be out there Target like Tamar. Oh. Be out there like Tamar Braxton. Hey. She took the, the Braxton's, her whole family, and spun two different shows about her. Oh. Two different shows. Her and Vince, and then Get Your Life. <laughs> After the divorce. Hey, man. I'm telling you. That money train going to be real solid for it. Man, y'all ain't never seen what this NIL could look like. Now, see, because I'm all about the bag. I'm all about the bag. But I'm with the traditionalists on this, man. When you get away from winning, when the attention starts to float away from winning championships, games, playoff games, titles, and it's all about just the bag, that's when I have a problem. Because at right. the end of the day, right, man, I don't know. You, you can't no. cheat the game now. You don't no. don't cheat the no. game. No, you gonna get mad right now. I'm gonna get mad right now. I don't know what's gonna happen. If Colorado makes it to the playoffs, oh, you might as well get mad at the Sanders because they're gonna be in everything. They're gonna be in every commercial. It's gonna get on your nerves. It's definitely going to get on your nerves. But if Colorado somehow is a good team next year, and oh, if they make it to the playoffs, the expanded playoffs left. Oh, that, that Shadour bag is going to be ridiculous. That Travis bag is going to be ridiculous. Y'all might as well just. I mean, shit, hell. Uh, Shador living, Shador living that bag. It's already big. Right now. On five wins. Winning five games. It's crazy. Great show today. You guys are great. Lucky Lucky Podcast. And like I felt bad for Flo J too, man. She had to sit up there and rub up back. Cop, please. Cop, please, please, please with her. her and all of that. Flo J ball last night. Flo yeah. J tried to keep him in the game. You know? Just, man, Angel, it's okay, baby girl. You it's lost the right, game. Yeah, it's yeah, all, all right. this extra stuff you did. Yeah. I mean, death threats. It's like, hey, now the death threats. Like I said, why is that? Why is that a person's favorite thing to talk about? Oh, the death threats. Every coaches do it. Players left, doing it. Left, it's like, come on, bro. Left. Come on, bro. I, I try not to go in this direction. Left. You and I both know that if we do, if, if we say something or do something to a media darling in this country, don't you expect certain things to come your way, left? Notre Dame fans come at us for being honest and objective about Riley Leonard. They come at us hard for just being objective about Riley Leonard. She literally went at the media darling of college basketball. Literally. Did she really think everything was going to be sweet oh, after yeah. doing That's that? Boy. She thought it was going to be sweet. She thought it was gonna be sweet. You're probably right, Left. See, I can she get this. Thought it was gonna be sweet because she thought she was the media darling. No, 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 no. no. I hope she, didn't think that. Woman. she might have been the culture's darling. She might have been she the media darling her. for the culture, but she was not the media darling for college basketball. No, that is she felt that she was misguided. You you're from Baltimore. You you weren't on the cast of the wire, baby girl. That's right. You're not, you're not it. 
Not over Kate. Oh, no. no. you can't. Yo, you do all this, do other stuff. And I understand. She was like, yo, I was standing up for the way they trash talk my girls in South Carolina. Okay, cool. But you still went at the wrong one. And the only way to protect yourself is to go and beat her again. You didn't do it. You didn't do it. Flat out. And it's okay. Take the L. Just go back to the gym. Go back to your roots. That got you to the success that you were able to experience. Because in the midst of all of those tears, I bet you're not giving that money back. No. That's why she said, but I enjoy it. If, so, if you're so sad and it was so terrible, get the money back. Get the money back. Get the money to chair. Go back to living the life you had before the national championship game. That's when you had peace, right? That's when you were happy, right? Go back to that time. Give the money away. I guarantee you she's not going to do that, love. No. I wouldn't do it either. I'm just telling you, man. I can't speak for everybody else. I'm a competitor. I would have been ticked off to lose that game last night. Ticked off. I might not even come to the podium. I would have been that ticked off. If if winning was if winning was the thing. If winning was the thing. That's my point. But winning ain't the thing. So she thinking about all the extra. Talking about all the other stuff. All the other stuff. If winning was the thing, she would have kept that about winning and losing. Mm -hmm. But clearly winning and losing wasn't on her mind. She was thinking about all the extracurricular, all these outside sources, blah, 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 blah. I think she wanted to win. I'm not saying she didn't want to win. When it wasn't the priority, though. She competed. It wasn't a priority since the national championship game. No, the hell point. Right. She didn't talk about winning at all. She just talked about how she was staying strong and wouldn't regret nothing and, oh, she's a good teammate. Talk about winning. Talk about how it hurt to, to lose in, in, the, uh, in the Elite Eight. You didn't even make it to the final four. Talk about that. Talk about how you, you regret it that you didn't take winning more serious. That's the honest. That's what I would have been like. Okay, I hey, I respect that. Yeah, I let the I let the winning get to my I let the, uh, the extracurricular get to my head, but you know that, that took me off my beat for winning. You didn't talk not one point about winning. That's what made me so upset. It's like, man, you not talking about winning, but you want to cry. Man, oh, come on, bro. So this NIL landscape, women's basketball, don't go down the rabbit hole and watch your game deteriorate same way it did after Steph Curry changed the game because that's what Caitlin Clark is doing for a lot of young ladies right now that are watching her. They're going outside saying, Caitlin Clark, three, two, one. Play Caitlin Clark, coach them. Coach them the right way. Teach them the game the right way. Don't let your game... This, this is, yo, the game of women's basketball can go to the next level if you handle success the right way at all levels for women's basketball. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. The opportunity is right there. It's right there for women's basketball. It really is. I'm telling you. And then young women and ladies, young women and men, Man, just keep winning first, dude. Keep winning as the foundation of what you do. That's what it's all about. You have to win, man. You got to win. If you win, like Deuce Knight told us in part one of the exclusive interview, we'll drop part two this weekend. I'm coming to Notre Dame, but I'm coming to win. And if I win... I know the money will come. That's it. That's Notre Dame's. That's Notre Dame players' favorite line. I'm gonna just worry about winning, and everything goes to take care of itself. The repeated line in Notre Dame. That's how I know you got your head on straight. You got to say certain things. Let me know your head on straight, and that's the number one. Man, bro. Lucky Lefty Podcast. Great show, love. That's right. We talked about the five stories, surprising stories of the spring that has both of us 
And I know that ain't fans feeling very ecstatic. Very. What? Very ecstatic about a promising 2024 season. Absolutely. And then we talked about the Angel Reese situation, how it pertains to Notre Dame, NIL landscape, and the game moving forward on both sides. You know what time it is, love. Petticoat. 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 Junction. It's time to get petty. Oh, we did a good job executing it. Are you upset with something? And fire up the Petticoat Junction train. I just don't like you. You don't? No. What is today's petty historic Petty Junction? Petty Junction, Petty Story of the Day, brought to you by Nora Whiskey at norawhiskey.com, that premium American whiskey at norawhiskey.com. Uh, yeah, Frank, I saw that uh, Kelly Jolly, she's out as a Tennessee women's basketball coach, former player, uh, still connects to the past of Pat Summit, as she played under Pat Summit. I think they brought her in to try to recapture some of that magic. But I think Tennessee now recognizes that it's okay to step away from uh, the Pat Summit tree. And I do love the old Miss head coach. I don't know if they make that move. I think they do already have someone in mind because you don't remove someone that goes to the tournament unless you feel like you have someone in mind that can take the program to the next level. Uh, Would they ever come after Neil Ivey? Mm, I don't think so, but who knows? You know, some deep pockets in the South, I'm sure they have someone in mind. We'll see. We'll see. Left, who you have for the petty train? Oh, man, the petty train. Who do I have today? I have, man, that Angel Reese thing really got me. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh. Man, I just feel like the petty train is full today. Bron talking about he retiring, but he's been talking about that every the last five years. Kind of sad about it. At the same time, I, I really feel like he's just gonna bow out one year. He ain't gonna really tell nobody. He's not gonna have a farewell tour. He just, but he wants that attention though. So it's gonna be interesting to see how he he, he ends his career. But, uh, yeah, Petty Trey, man, is always somebody on. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask that a lot of people in the music industry come on down. It's like at some point, man, when people fear uh, just saying this is wrong, all these artists coming out feeling like they have to defend what's right before us, man, Sit down and shut up. Stop. Or stop doing your dirt. How about that? Learn from what's going on right in front of you. Hey, like, wait, stop. Just stop. Just stop. I want to put 50 on the chain. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if he's hurt or if he's just making a joke out of it. I, I, he's I, hurt. He's been hurt. He's been hurt. Yeah. Diddy's been slapping him around, doing what he did to him. And it hurt. And that's why he constantly all the time would say stuff about Diddy. Because he was hurt. Hit dogs holler. You're on mute, bro. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely, uh... <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's, it's trolling or he really be salty or something. Like, I can't, I can't figure it out. You know how it is. I don't care, but it keeps coming up. You know how cats are always like, I really don't even care, but they keep talking about it and keep bringing keep it talk. up. That's what I'm saying. He keep making it. He keep making it. Uh... <laughs> it's hard, man. I think that if anything, he is uh, entertaining. You know, Ooh, I mean? fifth? oh, fifth is always entertaining. He's definitely entertaining. I, I, 
<laughs> I feel like you got to be hurt by it, though. No lie. You definitely got to be hurt by it. Man. Lucky Lucky Podcast, man. Great show. We'll be back. We forgot to get you. We'll say Javen Balls, a young man, 2025 wide receiver, possibly visiting his quarterback, Brady Hart, visits Notre Dame tomorrow. 2026 quarterback. His breakdown uh, left, broke him down in his film last week. So check that out. But, man. Get locked in with us. We'll be back tomorrow for another rendition of the Lucky Lucky Podcast. Have a fantastic Tuesday. But most of all, you have to make sure that you continue to spin it different. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow.